Welcome to the Citroen Oli. There's lots I could tell you about it, like the fact that somehow it is an SUV and a pickup truck. But it's not one feature of the Oli that makes me so excited about it, it's what it represents. Because what we have here is the embodiment of Citroen's belief that modern cars have become too big, too heavy, and too expensive. And this right here, this is the blueprint for how we fix that. We know you love the fully charged show, so why not come along to our global tour of live shows in 2023 and 24. Next shows are in the UK, specifically Farnborough and Harrogate. So get your tickets today. Where to begin? Well, this is a priceless, one-of-a-kind concept car, as you can probably imagine. Not destined for production anytime soon, but our best clue yet into the future direction of the Citroen brand, both in terms of design language and general philosophy. So I think what we need to do now is just have a nosy round this thing. There are so many features to talk about. And what you're gonna see very quickly is that everything, every panel, every screw on this car has been scrutinized and, and carefully considered in the name of maximum affordability, maximum sustainability, and minimum weight. And really the overarching way that they've achieved all of that is through simplicity. Let me show you what I mean. Worth noting, it's quite small, way smaller than you think. In fact, around 4.2 meters by 1.9 meters, which means give or take, it's MG4 sized, if a little bit wider. And yet, this car weighs, are you ready? A ton, one ton. This thing weighs the same as a new Lotus Elise sports car. It's an astonishing feat of engineering. How have they done it? Well, I'm gonna show you in a minute, aren't I? Let's talk about these panels. Seriously, made of cardboard, specifically a corrugated recycled cardboard which is formed into a sort of honeycomb structure and then smushed between two fiberglass reinforcing panels here's one i made earlier it's very hard very strong look cardboard seriously and around 50 percent the weight of equivalent steel coming around the side we see lots of examples of clever design to create a really simple manufacturing process this is something we saw on the ami first time around but a lot of the components on the car are just kept really, really simple. So for example, the door is identical on both sides. It's the same piece. That's just one less thing to have to manufacture. Likewise, the bumpers, front and rear, those are the same. These extended plastic wheel arches, they are exactly the same, as opposed to slightly different front and rear, just to lower the cost of production ever so slightly. Why so flat? Flatter panels are easier and cheaper and lighter, right? Why is the, why is the windscreen completely straight up right like this well because doing it that way uses the least amount of glass which means it's cheaper to buy cheaper to replace and you may well be rightly looking at that and thinking well hang on that's an aerodynamic disaster this thing must have the efficiency of a front door but the thing you have to remember is when you are light aerodynamics not that's important as far as efficiency, as far as miles per kilowatt hour. From its 40 kilowatt hour modest sized battery, it can pull just under 250 miles of range. That's over six miles per kilowatt hour. And incidentally, they have thought about this. They have made an effort to ensure that the air flows over the car a little better than it otherwise would through a very clever air duct. Just here inside both headlights, it comes out there, air flows over the top of the car and just lessens the aerodynamic disaster that is that slab of glass. Should we go for a drive then? That's allowed. Just a very little one, indoors. Where we go? In the Citroen Alley. This is, I think it's fair to say, one of the most important cars I think I've ever covered for fully charged. Because what it represents is all the change that we so desperately want to see in the automotive industry. We've seen boxy utilitarian electric cars before from Sono in the form of the Scion, may it rest in peace. And we've seen super efficient cars before that squeeze every last mile of range out of their batteries from Lightyear with the Zero, may it rest in peace. But we just haven't seen that kind of thinking from the legacy car brands. We haven't seen an OEM apply themselves to the task of an affordable, efficient, lightweight vehicle. I still can't get that number out of my head. 6.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Again, just proof that losing the weight makes everything better when it comes to modern cars. That is the key 
to efficiency, not a super slippery seven meter long teardrop shape. No, just make it less heavy. And then efficiency happens organically. Ah, just over here in the corner of the hall, we've got a little Citroen Ami parked up, which of course in many ways is the car that started this whole idea for Citroen of simplicity, affordability, the idea of having, you know, doors and bumpers that are interchangeable front and back, left and right, all came from the Ami. What we're gonna see across this interior, much like the exterior, is simplicity. These are made using 80% less components than typical modern car seats, just less to go wrong. And some really beautiful details in here. I love these 3D printed mesh back pieces. Honestly, really quite comfortable. Citroen says that these seats are easily upgraded as well, which I suppose just means you just buy different sorts of stick-on pads to fit your bottom better. This dash, 34 components, just 34 pieces, this entire dash and center console is made up of. Beautiful hollowed out 3D printed buttons. I like to think they're hollowed out to save that extra couple of grams because the weight saving in this car has been done to an obsessive degree. Give you a great example of that. No sound system in the Citroen Alloy. Instead, you've got mounts for two Bluetooth speakers, which you can then take with you to the beach upon arrival. Do you know how much that saves over a modern car? About 250 grams. So if you have a big lunch, you've ruined it. Speaking of charge and phones, look, look at this little special housing for your iPhone. You slide that in there and it clicks. I suppose you just have to have the model of phone compatible, bit concepty, but cool. And then what happens is your phone software will sort of fuse with the car's software and both will be accessible together through this long, thin strip of screen. You'll be able to customize your in-car settings and access your apps, all using this gaming style joystick on the steering wheel. Fun. And let's just finish on the inside of these doors before moving into the back. Well, I say inside of these doors. Normally doors have outer and inner panels, but this one sort of just has an outer panel and then the rest has just been turned into a giant pocket. Lovely big squashy armrest. No door handle here. That's extra parts. Who needs them? We've just got a nice little pull tab, like, you know, a Ferrari F40. Let's get into the back. What you'll find with boxy designs is they're ever so roomy. Also, suicide doors. Can we make those a thing on production cars, please? Look at this. All the space in the world. Again, 4.2 meters, this thing. MG4, small hatchback sized. And I've got room to recline back here, headroom for days. And again, just so many interesting little details. Everything in this interior, by the way, can be recycled as one. You don't have to split it out into lots of different categories. You just lump it all into the same box and off it goes to the recycling plant just to make things really, really simple. Some really interesting material choices. This is basically styrofoam, but I'd like it. It sort of works. It works as a kind of robust, simple material. It's, it's more interesting than sort of nasty, scratchy plastic, in my opinion. These railings, onto which all the panels and cushions of the seat are fitted. These, for me in the back, are available to mount various accessories on. So as you can see, I've got my tablet stuck on, I've got my charging port, I've got my little housing for my earphones, all mounted onto the back of these seats. That is a beautiful piece of design. And check these out, these big squashy boys here. This is basically extra suspension for each individual seat to maximize comfort. Inside the door, more clever, simple things. We've got a nice big storage bin. We've got a nice squashy armrest. No fancy electronic windows here, my friend. Oh no, just a little push to open situation because what more do you need? It's fabulous. <laughs> Around the back, I especially love the design of the lights, both front and back. They're actually really intricate. If you get inside of it, you can't quite tell where the beam is coming from. And then this is a bit magic as well. The back of this thing, kind of hard to tell. Is it an SUV? Is it a pickup? Yes, yes, is the answer. Because with some fiddling around, and it is a bit fiddly because this is a concept, you can turn this into a surprisingly long and spacious 
pickup truck. I think the thing that just makes me so happy about this little concept is that yes, we've got those principles of affordability and weight saving and sustainability that we so desperately want to see from new cars, but executed with a real sense of fun. This is a car that just makes you smile. Look, it's got these are rails to mount a GoPro so that you can film yourself having adventures. It's got roof racks to lash activity vehicles down to the roof of so you can take it, I don't know, white water rafting on the weekend. I mean, look at it. It's just a silly, happy little car. It makes me happy. So many people believe that making cars smaller, lighter, cheaper means making them worse and boring and less characterful. But this thing's got more character coming out of it than 90% of modern EVs that you can buy today. It's an absolute masterclass. What I would say to Citroen now is please now go and build these small, affordable, lightweight electric cars. Go and do it. Act on what you've done here and go and make all the other legacy car brands look a bit silly with their two and a half ton palaces. Fingers crossed, a glance into the future of car design and a very, very important vehicle.